Welcome back everybody. So again this morning I have another rewatch movie review. Now as I reviewed Man of Steel and Batman vs Superman last week, today it's the turn of the Justice League. So Justice League was released on the 17th of November 2017. Its director was Zack Snyder and Josh Whedon. It was made on a budget of 300 million US dollars and made 657.9 million US dollars. The cast in this movie consists of Ben Affleck, Amy Adams, Henry Carvel, Gail Gadot, Ezra Miller, Jason Momoa, Ray Fisher, Diane Lane, plus many, many others. So in this Justice League movie, we see Batman and Wonder Woman team up to recruit a team of metahumans to help them fight a very powerful new enemy in the form of Steppenwolf. Now, this is by far not the second time I've watched this movie, not the third time I've watched this movie. I've probably watched this about six or seven times. Why do I, have I watched it six or seven times? It's because I generally actually enjoy this movie and I see it for what it is. Now, no matter how much I know there is so much story missing from this movie, there are problems with this movie which I am well aware of and I've been well aware of since the first time I watched it. I saw this movie for what it was. For anybody that doesn't know this universe that well, they gave you enough to get you by. It's as simple as that. What I disagree with, and I've always disagreed with with this movie, is the fact that I believe that DC actually rushed this because they were trying to compete with Marvel. Okay? It is obvious that they wanted to try and push out a kind of team-up superhero movie, and they just rushed into this far too quickly and then Warner Brothers got involved with this movie and then stuck in some mandates with this which then aggravated or disrupted the movie making process in this movie. It is obvious in this I know that there are things missing in this movie and I know there are die hard fans that absolutely hated this movie. I have to be honest with you, I do not hate it, but I knew this movie was longer. You can see that things are off. You can see that the editing in this movie is very off, and the storytelling in this isn't there as such. Like I said, they just do enough to get anybody that doesn't know this universe by in this movie. <clears throat> And a problem going back on to Warner Brothers getting involved in this and sticking a mandate on this. They stuck a two hour maximum mandate on this movie, but yet there is a director's cut out there which is nearly four hours long, which I am going to hopefully get the pleasure to watch next year when they release this. Zack Snyder released announced that he was going to be releasing the director's cut for next year and I can't tell you exactly how on board I actually am with watching this director's cut because in this movie you can obviously see that it is rushed there are parts of the story missing and this is because I know this universe okay so I know that there are little bits missing from this movie but going back onto it I did actually enjoy this I did it is not perfect Okay, it almost feels like there was some forced com comedic moments in this movie, which there are. Okay, there are two different styles in this movie as well. You have Zack Snyder style, and then you have Josh Whedon's style of movie making, which is very familiar because we get to see this in the Marvel universe. Now, I am not one of these people that is full on DC, all that kind of stuff, DC all the way, or Marvel all the way. I love the DC universe, I love Marvel universe. So if anybody's thinking about trying to start anything on the comments in this about how amazing Marvel is over compared to DC, I'll tell you now, I will agree with you that the fact that Marvel are way ahead of DC, okay? I understand that. But I also believe that Marvel and, well, DC will, can produce some very, very good movies. And when people start comparing DC to Marvel, it's completely off. Because DC is more of a darker 
universe. The storyline in that is darker than what you get in Marvel. If you just go deep into or do even just a little bit of reading into the DC universe, it is a darker universe. Okay, It has more serious tones in this universe. It's as simple as that. And this movie, like I said, is a movie of two halves. You get to see Zack Snyder's kind of filmmaking style in this one moment. And then the next moment you see Josh Whedon's filmmaking style in this. With comedy moments in here which seem really, really off. As a general, the performances in this movie I do generally enjoy. Apart from force, the forced comedy moments in here. They're a little bit cringeworthy. And they're just a little bit off point in certain places. Other problems with this movie, obviously, is CGI. Now, obviously, I'm not going to go into depth with this. Henry Cavill was making the next Mission Impossible movie at that time. And I believe that Paramount Studios wouldn't let him shave off his moustache for this. So then DC and the production company and then had to CGI get rid of his moustache for the reshoots of the Justice League. Yes, it's extremely noticeable. Yes, it's extremely horrible. I 100% understand that and I 100% get that. But I also, it's not DC's fault on this one. This is Paramount Pictures' fault because they wouldn't let him shave that off. Stephen Wolf as a, as a villain in here, I generally in liked what they were trying to do. He wasn't creepy, he wasn't sinister, and he almost felt like he could always be beaten throughout the whole of this movie. But, and the CGI of him is extremely off and extremely rushed, which is very, very noticeable, I have to be honest with you, but I liked what they were trying to do with this character. Everything else, as in the superheroes, I generally liked Batman in here. You get to see a bit more of him. He's lost his darker, more angrier kind of tone, which is slightly a little bit of a bugbear for me. I won't lie, but he's still good to watch. And I still believe that Ben Affleck needed a standalone movie, which was on a very dark tone to set you up. It's like the same with Wonder Woman, Aquaman, Cyborg... <coughs> Ezra Miller, the only problem with Aquaman and all that, their standalone movies haven't come out yet. You had the Wonder Woman standalone movie, absolutely fantastic. You didn't really get much of a backstory to Cyborg's uh, character. You, not a huge story, well you did actually, I'll correct that, sorry. You get a backstory to his character. Ezra Miller's character, if you don't know The Flash, I didn't go into depth with his um, kind of backstory, but yet there is a movie coming up of that. He, Honestly, I get enjoyment from this movie. I know that there are problems with this movie. There are is one hint of dark side in this movie as well, in this cut of this movie, which is a little bit disappointing knowing that Dark Side is one of the biggest villains ever to come around and I will go out and say this on a bold claim is that Dark Side is a lot more powerful and a lot more stronger than Thanos. Okay? is being proven that he has potentially got the edge on Thanos. And I've always wanted to see Darkseid in a feature-length movie. And hopefully, if they can reboot this or restart this franchise, I'm hoping that one day we might actually get this. I get enjoyment from it. It's not the best movie in the world. I enjoyed it for what it was. There are problems, CGI problems, storytelling's off. There are two sides to this movie because obviously Zack Snyder's tragedy in his life, they had to bring somebody else in, which was Josh Whedon, who is responsible for the Marvel Universe, which then you can see there's a two sides of this movie. Um, but for me, until that director's cut come out, comes out, which is next year, I'm seriously... So I do seriously get enjoyment from this movie, even though I know there are problems with this movie. And that's not because I'm a huge DC fan. If I didn't like this movie, I would be more than happy to openly admit that I didn't like this movie. But I did actually generally like it. <coughs> Excuse me. And if I was to rate it, like I said, it will be a 5 out of 10 for the moment. Because I know that the director's cut is coming out, which is going to feel and look completely different to the Justice League that got released in 2017.
it's as simple as that. You're going to get more of a backstory. You're going to get more storytelling in this. You're going to get the more darker tones because it's from Zack Snyder. And he's telling this universe in more of a darker light than what we say we've seen from like Marvel. And I just want them to have that chance to show exactly what the director's vision actually was. It's as simple as that. So, on that note, please tell me what you think. Put it in the comments down below as normal. Hope you all have a great rest of the day, whatever you're doing. Please take care and goodbye.